So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where does that get us? You mm, Kodo must have taken it from the kitchen, right? You did it in secret. When nobody was in the dungeon. No, it's wrong! Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you want. Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Yeah. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um... No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Kino was in the dining hall. But I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops! Did I say that out loud? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall. And I didn't take the knife. So I'm not the killer! Okay, so then... Who did take the knife? Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. That's right! Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Uh... I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um... Well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room, so I don't think that's a problem. It's a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! But... I'm a girl. You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? 
Oh, yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because they're not here anymore. Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. I got it! Then, Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely... The person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all! No! You're wrong! So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. Hold on. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you?
There wasn't a single hair on the floor. So, the culprit removed some evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. Ha <laughs> ha Yes, very true, very true! Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then... Makoto isn't the culprit? Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand.
the incident took place in Makoto's room. Saika was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. No, it's wrong! The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yup, true as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> That's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. must not have realized that it was my room. Saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable!
And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident, but... The killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it! Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But... what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. One question. Oh, you. You gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um. Wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then, maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it?
Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, I didn't. Of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature.
But why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. You got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation. What young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then, pay attention! Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. It certainly would seem that way. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, My room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. It certainly would seem that way. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, but in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, My room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note, they would not have any... Mm. It certainly would seem that way. Sayaka and Makoto but in the note. It specifically says, My room. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, My I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto. No, it's wrong! The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got... switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in, was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other. 
so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was... Probably whoever she invited over... Came in and... Attacked her! We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah, what's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. See? Is... is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... Because she got hit with the sword, right there on her wrist! I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. Alright, then it's about time to solve this mystery.
fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist! So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! That's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist! So, she tried to fight back! She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword-based sneak attack! No, that's wrong! Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead! Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first. That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first! I think I get it! So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere, Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening! So she grabbed the sword to defend herself, but then the culprit took that from her too! Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and... finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear.
You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? That's not it at all. I got it! According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time, and the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower for a while. Oh my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means... The killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on! If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheet with the kitchen knife was... Had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation, These are all 
all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch room was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. For that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret.
if the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation, a totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then, you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. 